Roundtable Podcast. I'm a boy, Corey G, at Small Arms Day. Nope. Psych. Tyler C. Lover, at Trey Speed. <laughs> in the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susack. We're the Roundtable, brought to you by MaxNeverMuscle.com. What's up, fellas? What's up, what's up? What's How happening? we doing? Tyler, you ain't yeah, been on in a little while. Yeah, it's a beautiful day. I'm glad to be here. It is yeah. a beautiful day. So, probably what, less than two minutes ago, you didn't even know you were on today. That's no, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. I got told, sit down. <laughs> I like that on the fly. That's a that's a, how we roll around here. It is, and I think that's a good like mini topic to start yeah, with. Yeah. Being comfortable to do something like that becomes almost the norm, mm-hmm. which was not norm when you first walked in here, but is the norm now. And that's what people realize when they start hanging around here. All of a sudden, there could be a camera. Like I just walked in and did a promo real quick, yeah. and I just looked out of the corner of my eye and saw Cole like just move his desk because he knew the camera was coming. <laughs> I, know. I know. I always know. Yeah, he was like, I saw him go, yep. all right, I know G's coming this way next. <laughs> Trey's on the bean bag. He's like, I'm sure it's coming this way. <laughs> I'm wearing a hat talking about being George Washington's friend. I mean, yeah. I knew it was going to happen. Shout out George. Yeah, you know, yeah. what up, George? Uh, 17.76%. Yeah. We couldn't get 69 in there, but. No. I mean, we could have, but it wouldn't have made any yeah. sense. <laughs> I think I suggested I suggested something about sixty nine. It's like seventeen point sixty nine percent. Is that? Wait, makes sense. I, don't, I, don't, I can't remember exactly the context. We might have to do that at some point, though. Makes yeah. sense to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, does, it does make sense to you. Yeah. yeah. So but I think the I think the um, the deal concept and just like the camera and on the fly, it all kind of works together in like that creativity like flow. For sure. It's, it's the, the vibe. Here. It, yeah. yeah, it keeps things very exciting. Yeah, it does. You, you know? just never know. Yeah. It brightens so your you it to. brightens your day, right? Like yeah. That. It also makes you get everything ready to <laughs> j- hop into these unexpected things. Any you know and everything I mean? keeps you young at yeah. all times. I remember yeah. Anthony. That was Anthony Oliveira. Shout out, no free shout outs, but what up, Anthony? That when they uh, he was like, yeah, that's the one thing about coming to your joint. I just know someone could run up on me with a camera at any time. Fact. And he's like, so he he thought he thinks of that when he comes here. That's funny to me. Like I don't obviously think about that stuff, but that's like something that goes yeah. through his mind as he's walking in the door. That probably is more likely than not going to happen. Yeah, he's in a promo. We made him do that photo shoot the one time. Yes, yeah, yes. <laughs> he did the rap star photo shoot. Yeah. To, uh, he Nipsey. Good. He to did Nipsey. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did great. It was good. That's funny. For his like documentary thing. Like, yeah, yeah. which yeah. that'll be tight when that comes out. Yeah. Tyler, talk about that transition, though. Like, that's not your norm. No, yeah. Although you're a really good actor, so maybe it is your norm. You just No one's really brought it out of you yet. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's a little bit more of what it was. But, yeah, I mean, if we're, if we're looking at just the previous work environment before coming here and joining the team in full force, um, it wasn't necessarily. It was a, a bit more routine, always structure, mm. you knew protocol, and that was what was expected. Um, but I, I understood kind of earlier on in life and especially how it could apply here now. Mm that um, the better that you do get adjusted to just being able to say, even though we, we may not have been planning to do X, Y, Z, hmm. but um, if you're able to transition, the quicker you're able to be okay with that and just move with the flow of things and understand that that's what you have to do now, the better it is. Yeah. yeah. You think, um, so me and Rachel have had this talk a lot, uh, that she thinks a lot of that ability is sometimes personality driven, mm-hmm. that like it's not, and it's, I don't think it's natural for a lot of people. But you get more accustomed to it. Mm-hmm. So her and AG kind of operate that same way. And it's like when something sprung on them, they process so they might not even answer the right way. Or it might come off worse than it's supposed to because they, they're they like caught up so off guard. It's like their brain doesn't go, oh, and so, and I don't know if you just get better at that. So is that how you're, because you're so organized. So that's why I always, I, I feel like I'm so different than you. That's why I like to ask you <laughs> questions is, uh. Do you feel like that's how yours would process maybe previously and now you've just like gave up and just were like, you know, I'll just be fine because I just, I'll just, you know, you know what I'm trying to ask? Yeah, I think so. I think so. And I think in my own, I've, yeah, you mentioned that we're, there's differences between personalities and, and I would agree, but I think in my own way um, that I, I do and can operate that way to yeah. be like, hey, you know what, I'm not going to be mad that something that just came up and we got to change, you know, we yeah. got to transition different direction. That's fine. And I think what kind of the point Cole said is if you just, if you stay organized somewhat or prepared and have your stuff up front, ready to go enough anyway, mm. then you're not really super caught off guard anyway. When, when the day takes you this way, when yeah. you thought it was maybe going here, you know what I mean? But you to, you to mention the different personalities and how it's driven and um, relating that back to your family. I, I couldn't agree more. You 
you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I was just having conversations like this just yesterday with my fiance about and, and and about certain things and recognizing that what you just described is what was going on. It's like okay, there's more to understand than than what's really being said here at the For surface sure. level, and it requires nuance to say okay we're talking about this and here's the words that are being used and the conversation seems to be about you know this topic of discussion but recognizing that there's more going on way more than what, you know what i mean and having to respect that and trying to you know navigate that that not everybody operates the same way and say oh, okay i know what i'm trying to convey message wise but it may not be being received that way mm-hmm. and so you got to try to shape that conversation out of respect as best you can but I mean, if it's just how you operate, then... I've had to have Rachel explain things like that to me. She's like, no, 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 like, this is very second nature because of how you operate. This is not second nature for my personality. I know that because I've been dealing with you for so long. And and she's like, this is where AG is more like me. And so she's like, she can explain yeah. it better than I can explain because I can't identify all the way. You know what I mean? And so I think that's... That's uh, but that that's that's what I think though. When people, Nick's a great example, right? Super quiet dude. I thought like a huge breakthrough for him is when he did the air guitar back in the day because he just let loose. Right. You know, nice. what I mean, I'll never forget that because he was an intern and then he like went in and I was like, ooh, that's that's like it's little, but it's like that's a little growth because yeah. then it's like, all right, I just said, fuck it. <laughs> yeah, gotta go yeah. do this thing. Yeah, it's also a lot of us. Like we push each other to, yeah, yeah. to really break through the shell. Yeah, yeah, for like, sure. Like we definitely pushed Danny, obviously, <laughs> to break through his shell. It was literally he's over broken a year. through currently. It was I would over, say like close to a year of me basically asking him on every podcast, "When are you going to change your name to Small Arms Danny?" And then like the first time we like did video skits while he's in the office, like that was painful for him, but yeah. it was good. It was yeah, funny. It, it was, was great. It was exactly what we wanted it to be. Yeah. Oh yeah, because he plays the awkward guy so well. He's still awkward. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he's he really he's really dialed in his instagram store shout out danny danny's not here yeah yeah underwater but shout out he's he's dialed in the instagram story yeah. he's a great instagram story guy yeah, yeah. so if you follow the small so account, funny. put some great instagram <laughs> stories he's good on the podcast but yeah. every once in a while we get him on the actual skit videos yeah he's still like it's just there. just awkward enough. Just, just as awkward yeah <laughs> he's figuring it out yeah <laughs> Trey, talk about the transition from you, like being on, you know, from behind the camera, on the camera a lot, um, you know, obviously talking about deep stuff on the podcast, fun stuff, except yeah. like you're just uh, such a quiet dude. Yeah, I mean, like I feel like I can resonate like a lot more like with Rachel or yeah. like AG because like I'm definitely like way more a quiet person and like too, like as well as that, like I feel like like I've gotten better where when stuff's thrown at me, I know like it, I like I know how to operate where it just needs to get done like in a work capacity. Sure. But um, I still like process stuff like that though. So like, if someone like says something and it catches me off guard, I still like I I seem like I feel myself going through that like where I need to like process it. I need to like think about it. Yeah. Because like you said, then like when it catches you off guard, then like you might react one way. And but not even mean that. But actually. not even mean that. Yeah. But like that's how my. But I can relate though, because that's how my brain works though. Because I'm still like working on getting on getting better at all that kind of shit too as well. So what but I was. But go I've ahead. gotten like so much better though. For yeah, sure. and I like, knew just that. The podcast I alone. knew that about you a yeah. little bit too, and so that was one of the situations. Without giving a bunch of details, that I went through with AG the other night, where I saw him processing it, and he reacted a way that looked more negative than probably he intended Mm -hmm. but i had to then say look man like you have to process stuff and even if you know you're not going to do it like somebody asked him something he's not going to go do something it's like you say get me the details and then you process it later but don't give him that reaction like you're not interested that's why i was trying to explain to him and then rachel was like yeah she goes and people are taking us the wrong way because of that so you might give him a shitty look because you're like uh, you know, and yeah, and, that, yeah. and so I don't. I've never operated that way naturally. Yeah. So then it that's was how like, I am naturally though. So that's like definitely yeah. something that I've experienced like literally like my whole life. Though. Yeah. But definitely though, like since being in this environment though, like the podcast alone has helped a shit ton. ton. Like, yeah, just it's reps. Yeah, it's like you said, it's just the reps. Yeah, reps, confidence, and and then knowing like well, and I also what Rachel tried to tell me, she's like, he still needs taught this, Corey. I expected him to already know that. And so not only the pressure of like me probably obviously sitting there and him supposed to say the right thing, he didn't even know what to say. He, and so that's where I was like, all right, I'm trying not to be a dick. But like that was kind of embarrassing. So like how do we fix this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, it wasn't 
it was unintended, but so anyway, it was like one of these like really good like dad moments where I could be like, all right, but your mom's going to have to explain it to you because that's how she is. But I knew you were kind of a little bit like that yeah, too. Yeah. So that's how that's, that's interesting. I'm sure a lot of people are. Yeah. A lot of people like, like to have everything fucking. Yeah. But like you said though, like I think like to that point though, like the awareness factor yeah. of that though is like a big portion of it because like I like, so like I know like I'm aware of that now. Mm. So like now like moving forward when I like talk to people and stuff like that, like I know like, you know what I mean? Like, I know, like, if it catches me off guard, then I know not to, like... You, you can kind of fake it for a second to, like, get to it, to process it. Yeah, that, I gotta, that was kind of my point. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta, like, fake it for, like, five seconds, oh, process yeah. it. So you don't look like yeah. a dick. Then I have an answer. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a strategy, though. It's a strategy, yeah. Yeah. I think, but I... Exactly. But I think this is really good tips because I think a lot of people can probably identify with that, Trey. Yeah, for sure, yeah. In that awareness is, like, if you go back all the way to the things I talk about all the time with the Andrew Carnegie book, attractive personality is one of the main keys of how people are successful. Yeah. doesn't mean you got to be the most likable person, but the awareness of these little cues are what turn people off. And so if you do some of these things well or didn't do them as well before, but now do them well, you will get further in deals and situations. People want to fucking, they want to help people that they feel like, want to be there or want to be yeah. even though it was unintentional yeah so i just think that's it that's interesting sure. it's good growth dude reps absolutely yeah good you, you, you mentioned from a parenthood perspective it's something i think about nearly every day now mm. um is, yeah daddy tyler yeah <laughs> trying, to, <laughs> trying to remain patient because like you said there's there's certain things that we experienced um throughout our life that, mm. that not only we were forced to go through, but, of but also, yeah, we wouldn't have chose. Right. But also <laughs> over time helped shape our character. No question. Uh, and, and maybe in like a more hardened way. Mm -hmm. So then when we, if you want to say come correct and you mm -hmm. come to a situation that you, we sort of have this, this, um, uh, base level understanding that we, we want everyone to already have this understanding. They don't. And we have that expectation of this should be an unspoken understanding and you should come to the table this way yep. and, and have that understanding. That's how I felt. So I have to keep reminding myself because I mean, my, you, I'm, I'm in parenthood now, right? So my, my kid's only 15 months old and I'm like this, he, he barely has this many words yet, let yeah. alone the psychology and the interaction and immersing themselves. But think about just the support already. Right. As you as a dad and her as a mom, like yeah. it's already different than your life. Oh, absolutely. Different. Not even the add the financial, add yeah, the yeah, understanding, yeah. like it's right. never going to be even close to the same time. Right. You're yeah, going to have all the same challenges all of us do. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> which opens up a whole nother conversation <laughs> of like, so how do you try to offer enough of a dynamic that's going to challenge them yeah. and isn't going to pad the life? But then also when it comes to the psychological aspect and the growth and development mentally and uh, communication amongst other people, it's like, how do you offer the right balance? of all of those things the patience but it's the tricky. understanding and the teaching and the learning and things that will serve well and i'm a psycho so like i got gotta it. be like all right yeah this Let me walk this back a little yeah bit. yeah that no <laughs> exactly and that's what i and i i was like okay but rachel actually helped a ton and that's like our communication over all these years understanding each other more and i think that helps me understand my kids because i've been dealing with her and then when she sees the parts of me she knows where it's coming from too so she's like because Alex is interesting dynamic because he also has the obsessive gene like I do. So that's why he could do the Rubik's Cube in a fucking minute and he could do the stock trading. And so like pitching is another great example. He gets in the weeds and he immerses himself and he figures it out, which is why I think whatever he does, he'll be real successful and because he has that part. So she knows though when he's in that, it's just in it. Mm -hmm. And like you can't tell him nothing. Like he's just in it at that. And so it's interesting because then I'll tell her like, yo, that's not like something you can really stop. You know, you like if I'm to. obsessed with something, I'm just like, you know, that focused or whatever. So it's interesting if you have that communication and that most recently as they got older has is a lot with us. But, yeah, it's hard not to be like you expect them to already know what you know, but they don't even know close to what you know. So that's like that, yeah. you know, that's a tough parent. Right. Parenting is tough, dude. It is. It requires, <laughs> it's a constant, but it's like, the, I, I picture it as the ocean. Like it's, mm -hmm. you know, you might have some more rough times. You might have some more calm times, but it's constantly in motion. Yeah. Like if you're out there on a boat, you're never not moving at least a little bit. It's mm -hmm. a constant balance. Well, what I try to do too is like, because I think my relationship with my kids is a lot different than my dad was. I can go, all right, I'm pissed at you. All right. I understand why you reacted that way. And then I can go back and say, and I literally what I said, look, dude, I'm not trying to be a fucking dick. I'm just trying to be better than my dad. And I don't think he would have taught me that. So, and he's like, yeah, I get it, dad. 
You know what I mean? So then I can just shoot them straight as a, a adult, basically. Mm-hmm. And so then there's a, so I think like that change has been awesome because I never had that. You know what I mean? And so that's something yeah. I would recommend as you get older because like you don't get everything right. And I've even said like, I'm this way because of these things that happened to me. And so I'm not saying like when I fly off the handle, that's like awesome. I'm just telling you that it probably hit a button of why I want our shit to be different. And so like if you can communicate that good, bad, or indifferent, I think it helps. Absolutely. Because I remember AG asked me one time, like he didn't realize like I had like anger problems. Like I used to be fucking mean. Sure. Like and I started getting fights when I was younger and I fly off the fucking handle and it's still there. <laughs> Kyle's seen it before. <laughs> Shout out Kyle. <laughs> Yeah. I tried to karate chop the fucking desk yes. one day in old school yeah. before I fired him. That was great. Yeah, so it's there, which I'm able to channel through lifting. So I've been able to, but I've he's seen it a couple times. He's like, I just didn't know that you dealt with that. I'm like, dude, I was angry about my life. Mm-hmm. So I had to channel into something course, that could make yeah. me better. You know what I mean? I know you got some fucking build up craziness too. Yeah, Trey, I, I used mean, to like punch walls. Exactly. Like I was the same. I did the same <laughs> shit, and I still have done that. Uh, don't yeah. I'm real proud of it. But it happens sometimes. Like yeah. sometimes, it just looks like a blinking light that just needs punched, and there's yes. nothing I can do about it. <laughs> Literally. That. And that's yeah, when that's when, exactly and when I go looks. like this. <laughs> Boom! It just lets it all out, and I, I don't know, but I think the squats and that do that for me, and have my whole life, so I've been yeah. able to control yeah. it. But it's still there, so it was hard for him to hear. Wait, that's like was an issue. I'm like, yeah, dude. Like I was like aggressively mad at my entire situation. Why do you think I got successful? Because I channeled it. So it's like you know, but he's not gonna have that. So it's hard for him to identify. Mm-hmm. But every kid, no matter how good we try, they all gonna have their own issues. I'm just trying to have a little less issue than we. Have. All right. Us. No, for sure. <laughs> no, full respect. Full respect. And, and to your mention of what you were just describing and the differences of, you know, you feel a certain way because you went through this, but because others haven't gone through that. So, number one, they're not going to identify, Mm-mm. but they don't have the same emotion tied to that and understand why it's reached the height that it has and, and how it relates to the current situation. So, the, it's just, it becomes a lot to extrapolate and break down mm. and say, you know, maybe this is what was going on and here's how I viewed that. You may not understand why I don't agree with this and yeah. why it needs to be stopped and or steered in the right direction from here. Um, but it's it's definitely a challenge to try to communicate those things and yeah. help them understand where your emotion comes from, where it's at. Maybe they're here and we're here and how can we bridge that gap and try to get yeah. to where we're on a common understanding, even if we operate differently. But understanding that it can never feel the same. Mm-hmm. It's just impossible. Mm-hmm. It's virtually impossible nobody at this table's kids are going to feel the same that we felt it's impossible and for a lot of good reasons but correct like you said, i mean but there's a lot of good things that had come from how you guided your life from there for you know sure because I mean? they're really when you break it all down we get down to brass tacks it's like one of two choices and one choice could have been a heck of a lot different from where everybody got the why right bro now. you yeah. got the why you're absolutely. like do i go this way and keep smoking bowls yeah. and like you know yeah. do i go this way yeah, yeah. absolutely <laughs> Absolutely. No, full Shout out to smoking bowls. <laughs> what do you think, Cole? You just taking the <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot. I mean, this is like some real shit. It is know? some real it's shit. Some real shit. Yeah. I mean, it it's a lot of. It really is a lot of self awareness. I would say all of us here are. Everyone here is super self aware of who they are, what triggers them, Absolutely. what doesn't trigger them, what like they fucking care about, what they don't care about, like mm-hmm. all of it. How they operate, how they don't want to operate. Everyone's pretty super spot on about mm-hmm. that like you can pretty much tell i think also like having a lot of dialogue on in you know ways like this helps yeah because you get to learn so much more about people like think about from just the round table version one first episode all the way to now how much we've learned about each other even yeah. just the amount tyler's been on you know what i mean so like to have pinpointed uh conversations forced every week forced in a good way but that's still what it is like to have like real conversations with people you work with there's no way you wouldn't have a deeper understanding like i would argue that like it's one of the best team building things you probably could ever do facts yeah yep right yeah on accident but on purpose because then you like you really know at the 
deepest level how everyone operates yeah. so you can basically make better decisions and do better yeah. things work better knowing, work better cohesively yeah, yeah knowing how everyone operates absolutely but then we know how good like we operate as a team and then trying to work with other teams who aren't at the same level oh boy extremely <laughs> it requires a lot of nuance right <laughs> 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 well, yeah, it Tyler smiling that, that, that kind of goes back to like the whole communication thing is like how can we properly tell you we want this fucking shit done right now <laughs> yes. because we've been on it we've been ready we know yeah. where our a game's on how do you properly convey that to where it's like listen listen i, I just want you to like <laughs> catch up to speed a little bit you know right yeah yeah All right, that's so my challenge kinda, so i got a s story kind of kind of similar trailer. so um when i go lunge at the track mm -hmm. in my instagram story yeah. so i said something to that guy oh you did <laughs> amazing yeah so i basically just told him like stop being a pussy like yeah yeah what do you say stop scrolling so this is where this is where it gets good. I hope he's listening. So he has this realization. This is solid. Um. So yeah, I walked up to him. And I was basically like, "Yo, like, quit scrolling on your phone. I don't know what how you're doing. Instagram, Twitter. You're taking ten steps in between every single rep. Like, I was like, if you're gonna do, because I the first the question I asked is like, hey, are you doing core G fitness? He's like, yeah. And I'm like, I was like, all right. Well, like, if you want the results, yeah. then like, you need to be about it. Like, you got to do the shit. I fuck with that because. Like I said this, I was like, the thing is, is if I saw him doing that same shit, I would say, yeah, I was like, here, because I was like, here's the thing, I was like, I was like, Corey gets all these messages, there's all these blog questions, saying shit doesn't, shit doesn't work. I'm like, the only, the only people that the shit doesn't work for, is the people that don't actually do it. Yeah, that's I'm, doing what he's doing. Exactly. <laughs> and so I just like set him straight, and yeah, I mean, the dude literally just like looked at me, like laughed in my face because like I just like said it to him like straight ass face, like I was. <laughs> Like, I was pissed because I just got done lunging. Yeah, yeah, I see yeah. him all the time, and it's, like, motivating to me. Sure. So, like, yeah, I just had, like, a straight-ass face, like, said it to him in, like, a pissy way. So, like, he just, like, he didn't probably, didn't, he didn't, like, take it serious. I know he didn't take it serious. Yeah, he yeah. Just, like, he just, like, had, like, a smile on his face. Yeah. But if you're going to be really fucking about it, mm -hmm. then you need to really actually be about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, yeah. I just, like, back to, like, the team, like, thing, like, I just know, like, if someone's going to lunge... Then what they're repres then I just know what they're representing. Yeah, yeah. And I just didn't want that to be our representation. Repre yeah, be to our be. Representation. It was like disrespectful, for basically it was, everything. <laughs> of I course, felt like, I yeah. felt like it was disrespectful. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. When the quicker he comes to that realization and accepts what you said, instead of letting the ego laugh at it and just yeah. smile at you and try to process it that way, the quicker he's going to get results. So you're sure. helping. That's what I was. Yeah, yeah that's that's him. my whole point. Yeah. But also think about what I like about that is that, but that's also the mentality of the gym too, Trey. Not only yeah. our work environment is that if somebody's not doing something right to bring that's bringing the team down a level instead of you're saying hey man if you're kind of like loosely on our team you're on the app then you you need to be all the way up to speed this is what it is exactly. i'm one of the motherfuckers there every day yeah so if you ain't going to take that serious from me then you ain't really about it so it's like i, I fuck with that because at the end of the day though as the group matter whether it's an immediate group or the internet group gets better then everyone, everything gets better everyone gets better yeah so i fuck with that yeah Respect. and there's like uh it's you just know that if you see someone like lunging or whatever or doing the workouts or whatever you know like they're fucking about it yeah like you know or like they're trying to be you, yeah, yeah you know like their work ethic and like what they are trying to push is probably at the, is they're trying to get the same level as everyone else mm -hmm. yeah you know he knows you're one of the main guys don't he trey I don't think he knew who it was. Uh, yeah, from that description, it doesn't sound. Then that's like from, the, yeah. from the from yeah. the conversation. Didn't it sound like he knew who I was? No, Got so. it. Well, shout out if you're a roundtable listener. You yeah. know now. Yeah. Yeah. I was probably yeah. bitch, I was probably about. bitching at him. He's listening to the roundtable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking better. funny. Choices. Get better. I think so. I think the um, the direct talk shit is like ba basically kind of a lost thing right now. I think yeah, and th I think that's like. But people like need that though. People need to like be set straight. Like sometimes you need to like sit down, and just look someone dead ass in the face, and like yeah. just say something. <laughs> but what I've known is notice is like there's a lot of people have a lot of problems with that. With that, yeah. You know, and I think like growing up, like I was. That's why I would say like when I worked with men when I was a boy, that's how they talked to me. So at 17 or 18, or even 16, like the sawmill, the fucking or the farm. The mind, the guys talk to you direct, and ex and there's an expectation to act like a man. And I think like that, like understanding, like I couldn't get butt hurt because they're like, no, do it this fucking way. There was no. And you're like, way. oh, okay, yeah, you know what I mean? I don't know. So like, and then in the gym because I'm so serious, I took that on, 
And so, and then when I didn't do very good in my first meet where the West side guy helped me and I asked him how to get better, Tim Harrell looked at me and said, get stronger. <laughs> and I was like, great fucking tip. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it was fucking, and then when I asked him the first time when I was done squatting like nine sets early, because I was like basically like done with the warm up, he said spot. <laughs> so I think that I started to take these like real direct because i thought he was going to tell me like well you should do your speed work this way no like get your shit together get tougher get stronger do your own fucking research go train you know like so i think like i started taking that approach like all right i need to be real direct with people on the expectation take the fucking weight get back under the fucking bar like because people just don't operate that way anymore and so but i notice and rachel said this to me that when I talk to some of the kids, I talk to like a lot of AG's friends that way, especially in the gym, and they've got used to it, but I could tell at first it was weird for them. Like, nah, motherfucker, like, you fucking pull that shit like you mean it. What the fuck are we yeah. doing? Yeah. Like, you know, that why you get up today, like, I just don't know that that's like normal diet. I think that shit's kind of lost. No, nah, it's not normal at all, no. I yeah. think for young men in particular in this day and age, they need more of that. Yeah, Even if I it's agree. Like you said, like you said, like it's definitely like an ego thing. Mm. One, well, I mean, everyone well, has it. Everyone yeah. has it. But the sooner you admit it and acknowledge it, you yeah. can make it your friend. You yeah. Oh yeah, my feelings get hurt, and people talk direct to me a little bit too. You, I mean, that's yeah. it's well, a normal part, interaction. Part, that's part of it, yeah, a thousand percent. Mm. We have a we have a yeah, commercial yeah, break. Yeah, we got a commercial break. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Kyle's giving me the yeah, yeah, All right. like, let's go to commercial. We'll be right back. The Roundtable Podcast is brought to you by Max for Muscle. With us is the Director of Sports Performance, Tyler Treadway. Treadway. Yo, so I don't know if you're aware, but Max Effort makes products specifically for athletes. We got it tested by NSF to make sure that what we say is in the label is actually in the product. It's tested against 400 ingredients that would make you test positive on any sort of performance review. But we want to make sure that our athletes are taken care of. So if you're a high school athlete, a college athlete, professional athlete, you can hit us up, make sure that these products are get you taken care of, they're going to get you results, and they're safe for you. If you're a coach, player, anything, hit me up, Treadway21, and we'll get you taken care of. And Thank you, Treadway. And you got the protein, NSF certified, is that what you're Protein doing? is NSF certified as well as amino recovery. All right, my guy. Look at that. Thank and you, Treadway. Thank you, Treadway. You're looking very small today. All yep. right, let's go back to the show. <laughs> And we're back. That was yes. a great. That was a great uh, commercial. Yeah, thanks. I think uh, we should. If there was an award for like best podcast commercials, we would win. We would be up there, especially Quality. organic. Quality for sure, all organic. Yeah, yeah. No free shout outs, but I mean, yeah. shout out Cole. Facts. <laughs> Facts. Hey, <laughs> all right. So th we're going to give some tips on direct talk real quick. Yeah. So Trey, I'm coming to you first because you're talking about you have process stuff a little bit like that like maybe so if somebody comes at you direct like if you were the guy at the track and somebody come at you like that how would you then respond or how would you tell people to respond you would never not lunge like that though so that's or never lunge like that so but you know what i mean i'm trying to tell people they're listening and they're like ah, i don't fucking act like that but when somebody says something straight down the pipe to you i think like you people, need i think like you need to realize though that like if someone's even going to <laughs> like come up to you and say something direct mm. to you like like if anybody is like going to take the time to do something like to you in that manner in the first place yeah. then like I think you need to realize that like they have to care yeah some like they have to care there's somewhere. some reason you have to like yeah I think like you have to like think more about like where they're coming from if that makes sense you know what I mean like Other person's for, shoes. yeah like for example like for example like like that conversation like the whole point of that conversation was like the, like I want the dude to get better yeah so of like course. so like like he's like you gotta like understand like someone's not like someone's not gonna walk up to you out of ego and just be like, yo, you're trash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> like people, I mean, people. Some people. They, do people that. do that, but, but like that's, that's not, not something. Common, that's yeah. not something that like that people do. That like someone, I I feel like especially like when it comes to, like any like type of work, whether it's like business work or working out work, like someone's not going to take time out of their day to mm. say something direct to you. Yeah. If, they do, if they don't think that it's like if it's gonna make you it's good it's going to make the situation yeah. better purpose. like that's the whole that's the whole purpose of the like of the talk I think yeah because when I had that kid I think I told the story but I'll retell it I was run I was at the track lunging and he was running I don't know if I told you the story and he was a college kid and his dad was there with him 
he was he wasn't he didn't go to Denison. He went to a different college, but they must have been in town or whatever. And so I'm lunging in lane one, and he's in there. He's warming up or whatever. And like I'm on my second lap, and I'm pushing, and he stops me to see if I'll get out of lane one. Yeah, it's annoying. <laughs> and I laugh at him and go, no. <laughs> 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 so then I finish lunging. He obviously runs around me, not very happy. And I I ask his dad after because he's running or whatever. I go, uh, what's your kid studying in college? Oh, he wants to be in sports and fitness management or whatever. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Go holler at him when he comes back around. So he's done. I'm like, hey, man, I was talking to your dad. You know, I'm in the industry. Blah, blah, blah. The kid was like super arrogant, which was per- first part. And and he goes, oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, I've been running a business in it for like 20 years. I'm like, you know, and we're kind of chit-chatting. And I said, have you ever seen anybody do like what I was doing? And he's like, no, I've never seen it. I was like, yeah, I was working pretty hard. He's like, yeah, I saw that. I was like, don't ever <laughs> fucking come up to somebody that's working that hard yeah. and ask him the fucking move so you can do your workout. Are you fucking kidding me? I was here first. I'm like, bro, I've been out here doing this for a long time at a real successful level. Like, that's like some shit you just don't do. So take it from like an old school dude. Like, I would never fucking do that to an older cat working at the working like that hard. And you're not even, this ain't even your fucking track. Yeah. I'm here every fucking day. Like, I, I like gave him some game real quick. And he kind of looked at me like, basically like, fuck off. And I walked over to his dad. I'm like, yeah, I just schooled your kid a little bit. Like, I think he probably learned a couple things. But he probably didn't. But the reality was, it was like, you know, when I started talking to him like that, as a grown man, and when his old man was standing there, which I was probably the same age as, but his dad was like out of shape and not like in, in like into it. Uh, it was fucking hilarious. Like it was hilarious for me, but he was so fucking like awkward, but very arrogant to it. Like, fuck, you should have got out of my way. Yeah. Motherfucker, fuck you. But the whole point of that conversation though was to like, to make him better, yeah. like in the industry, like you can't op- operate like that. Exactly. Instead of what he should have done is said, what do you run again? What, what kind of business? Like, instead of flipping and going, wait a second, I could get value from this dude because he went out of his way to make me check me a little bit. Like, I wasn't about to fight the kid, but I was direct with him, like, because that was wrong. And so it's like, it was funny because it was the same kind of interaction, and he kind of just laughed it off instead of being like, he could have flipped it. Like, you know what? You're right. Even if he didn't think that. What do you do again? Yeah. You obviously cared enough to come over, and that that's the hard part where he couldn't switch it because he's yeah. young. But, like, and I don't know that I could have either if I was doing something. But, I mean, that's the 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 talking point I was trying to get across, but you hit too. So, but it reminded me of my, yeah. I mean, I'm like at 600 meters sweating my ass off doing like a really good time. And he's asking me to get out of the fucking lane. Yeah. Come on. (laughs) I'm glad you talked to him. Oh, there I was like, I looked at, I started, I literally started laughing. I'm sure the 800 meter lunges was a way harder workout. Come on. Of course. (laughs) Of course it is. That's good. So anything else? Cool. No. So I was thinking, all right, so you're talking like giving direct talk. What about if someone tries to direct talk you? Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, is so I'm like that, that, well, so what I've done is I've gotten older, attempt to first go, why are they, you know, like Trey said. But, yeah. it, but that took me a while. That's kind of why I think that's it's like, a good yeah, talk. That's like, that's a, like a, thing, a maturity thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because then I have to weigh like, all right, because Rachel will try to do that to me sometimes. And then I'll flip it on her. <laughs> hey. And I'll flip it on her and go, do you ever – I go, do you ever think that sometimes you're not right? <laughs> yeah. You know what she said? I think I've been wrong twice. I said, I think you're fucking wrong right now. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, I try, I, I'll try to, because uh, obviously when you're an alpha entrepreneur, you're going to think a lot of your shit's right. As yeah. I got older, you guys see me ask you guys stuff that I don't know all the time. Like, what is your, like, give me your feet. Like, I don't know. You know what I mean? I've, I've gotten better at that a lot. But, you know, if it's in my wheelhouse, that person better have some real shit behind their name if they're coming at me like that. Unless it's like something I'm extremely unaware of and they can shed light on, then I'm probably going to catch it. Yeah. Or if I don't catch it in that moment, I'll rethink about it later. But I do try at least my best to process it. But if I know it's bullshit, then I'll laugh at it. Yeah. So I'll laugh at it after I can process it because my processor is pretty fast. So I'll go like, nah, that's fucking bullshit. And then, <laughs> and you know, so it just depends process that way yeah, yeah yeah but most of the time i'll probably fake it even if i don't like it process it and think if it's real or not and then if i know the person i'll come back and say thanks or no thanks 
for sure. You know what I mean? But I, I will, I'll try my best not to process it in a mean way initially unless I really know it's, like, out of left field. Yeah. I haven't had that a whole bunch. I think people are more scared of me sometimes than I think. And I don't even realize that about myself. Yeah. <laughs> so Jack to tan and I don't know. I think maybe it's because <laughs> of how serious I am. Yeah, As true. I get older, um, I think people are catching more of that. Even though I feel like I'm a nice person, but I think my seriousness is starting. Or the gym stuff, maybe there's a different perception of how I am because they see that crazy shit. I don't know. Yeah. But I've noticed that about as I got older. So, no. That's good. I think it was a good episode. Yeah, yeah it was good. A lot good. of good stuff broken yeah, down. That's part of it. Yeah, yeah well, I'm, uh, so another tip on direct talk, mm -hmm. Peaky Blinders, right? Fucking love so Peaky Blinders. So Tommy Shelby, like, I don't know if you've picked up on this, but anytime someone questioned him, his, this is my favorite thing, he'll, he'll, he'll let them talk, he'll just stare at them, and then he'll usually just tell them to shut no. the fuck up. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> in, in the show, his, like, younger brother presents him an entire plan, like, he did this 30 page plan to take over the business to where he takes a silent role because he's getting too outlandish he presents it to him he's like I think this could be really good for the business blah 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 presents it to him he just stares at him takes it throws it in the fire and that was it. <laughs> it, was, it was like it was like end the conversation yeah. we're done with it now <laughs> yeah it was amazing I'm like yeah this is fucking awesome that's a great way to end it yeah. <laughs> that is true when I saw yeah. that it was like he spent all this time but he was yeah. like not fucking happen yeah <laughs> let him know yeah. All right, Roundtable Podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G. What up? At Small Arms Danny. We had TC Lover in, which did a great job. At Trey Speed in, the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. We are out.